Rachel Green was born and raised in New York, which she rightfully considered the best city on earth. From an early age, the girl showed interest in medicine, which eventually became the meaning of her whole life. Little Rachel's first patients were her friends and acquaintances, whom she played with, bandaging them up, acting out scenes that she saw on TV. It all seemed like nothing more than a game, but Rachel knew that she would certainly achieve what she wanted. At first, the girl's mother didn't pay any attention to her hobby, and only when her daughter's love for medicine lived through the challenging teenage years did the woman realize that they would soon have a doctor in their family. Despite the fact that the family wasn't all that wealthy, Penelope Green did everything to ensure that the social difference between her daughter and her peers wasn't too striking. When Rachel graduated from high school, the young woman followed her lifelong dream and went to med school, which she later graduated from with honors. The young woman got a job with an emergency medical station where only the most qualified specialists were hired. Overall, Rachel really liked her job and believed it was extremely important for society. Rachel's patients always noted her professionalism and sympathy, which she never failed to express for someone else's illness or pain. Meanwhile, even though Rachel was very successful at her job, her personal life was a complete fiasco. It just so happened that the young, beautiful doctor was unlucky in love, which, as we all know, can often be unrequited. Rachel's mother repeatedly told her daughter that she needed to find a life partner as soon as possible. Well, mom, it's not like I can just marry the first man I meet, is it? You know what happened between Brandon and me, the young woman said, trying to stay calm. At the mere mention of her daughter's ex-boyfriend, Penelope Green turned pale and tried to change the topic of the conversation as soon as possible. The woman remembered perfectly well how much suffering and pain her daughter went through after breaking up with Brandon, who turned out to be a rather miserable person. It's hard to say what exactly caused their breakup, but according to Rachel, she and Brandon simply weren't a good match. Of course, when they were young and full of energy, life seems carefree and devoid of any problems. But as soon as you grow up a little and get burned in a failed relationship, you begin to appreciate what you used to have. Brandon had a bad temper, he was very suspicious of everything, and his fits of jealousy could drive anyone crazy. In all fairness, it's worth saying that the man wasn't always a brawler, and Rachel knew it like no one else. Brandon used to have his moments of peace and quiet, and then he was a kind and romantic young man, with whom the young doctor would have gladly agreed to spend the rest of her life. Unfortunately, the bad outweighed the good, and the young people had to break up eventually. The breakup was very hard for Rachel, since at some point, she used to think that their relationship was virtually perfect. Burying her face in her pillow, the young woman cried herself to sleep every night, which broke her mother's heart. Sure, two years later, the pain wasn't as sharp as it was before, but Rachel still couldn't get over it completely. Whenever she took Brandon's photo out of the closet, tears started flowing down her face and it felt as if her heart could burst from the excruciating pain. That was why, whenever Penelope Green talked to her daughter about marriage, she tried her best not to remind Rachel of her failed relationship with Brandon. Since Rachel's personal life was in shambles, she directed all of her time and energy to work. The management valued the complacent and responsible employee who could easily fill in for a colleague when they needed a sick day or deliberately take the most difficult calls received by the dispatcher. So it happened that day. The dispatcher got a call about an emergency situation in a restaurant. I wonder what happened there. Another stabbing or food poisoning, perhaps? Like that time with the puffer fish? Rachel asked, making sure that her medical bags were fully stocked. Who knows? They said that one of the wedding guests was feeling sick. The driver answered. Rachel had been working with him for three years. At the mention of the wedding, the woman winced and chose to refrain from further comment. In the depths of her soul, she didn't like going to calls to public places where everyone strove to help her, but in fact only made things worse. Since the wedding was taking place at one of the best restaurants in the city, it was very crowded. After a quick conversation with the well-trained doorman, Rachel found out where the patient was and what happened to him. Fortunately, the situation wasn't as bad as the woman had imagined. The problem was an allergic reaction that one of the guests was having to the food. That makes sense. There were so many exotic foods on the table. 
Rachel thought, giving the patient an injection. While treating her patient, the woman couldn't help but take note of the grandeur of the wedding reception, which was paid for by the bride's wealthy father. Charles Somerset was a millionaire who made his fortune in the oil industry and could easily afford to pay for such a luxurious celebration. After Rachel had performed all the necessary procedures with the patient having an allergic reaction, Charles Somerset came over and offered to pay her for her services. Rachel looked at the millionaire in surprise, after which she answered in a tone that brooked no objections. No thank you, Mr. Somerset, but I'm just doing my job. I have a good salary and I don't need someone else's financial help. Charles chuckled, but chose not to reply to her caustic comment. Instead, he took a glass of champagne from the table and approached one of the guests. Rachel had already packed her bag and was about to leave when she suddenly saw something that made her freeze for a moment. God, this can't be happening, the woman whispered. Rachel's attention was attracted by the young wedding couple who were posing for the photographers and enjoying their day. There was nothing special about it, of course, as such photo shoots happened at almost every wedding. There really would have been nothing special about it if Rachel hadn't recognized the groom. It was her ex-boyfriend, Brandon Parker. What was even worse was the fact that the man looked at Rachel as if nothing had ever happened between them, as if they didn't even know each other at all. Basically, Brandon acted as if it was his first time he ever saw Rachel and had never had anything to do with her. The groom simply looked through Rachel as if she were a ghost, not a living person. Well, that won't work. He could have at least nodded in my direction or something. I get it, he's marrying into a rich family and stuff. I still deserve some respect, Rachel thought. Unable to control her indignation, the young woman put her bag on the floor and came over to the groom. Brandon gave the guest an appraising look and turned to the stage. This attitude angered Rachel even more. Well, you could have at least acted decent and said a couple of words to me, the woman said sarcastically. The groom frowned and, looking at Rachel in surprise, asked, What? Excuse me, miss. Do I... do I know you? How do you even have the audacity to ask me that? Of course we know each other, Brandon. Have you forgotten everything that happened between us? Rachel exclaimed. The man's face immediately showed sincere amazement. Miss, I'll say it again, you're mistaking me for someone else. But there was no stopping Rachel. Her cheeks immediately flushed, which indicated she was extremely angry. At that moment, the bride approached the groom and the doctor and immediately started commenting on the situation. What are you doing? What are you trying to insinuate? This is my lawful husband and he doesn't know you. Having realized that she couldn't back down now, Rachel decided to prove that she was right and that she did know Brandon. Here, look, the man I knew had a large mole on his neck. Here, right under his collar, Rachel exclaimed and pulled the groom's tie in order to expose his neck. The guests looked at the groom with condemnation, as there really was a mole the size of a large olive on his neck. Oh God, she's telling the truth. A whisper swept through the crowd of guests who had gathered around to watch the entertaining scene. The groom shied away visibly and blushed to the very roots of his hair. But my name is Michael and I, I never knew a man named Brandon, the man whispered and stepped aside. It's hard to say what would have happened next if the bride's father hadn't decided to intervene. Having given the woman a contemptuous look, he immediately pointed his finger to the door. Out. You, you've done your job here, now you can leave. I won't let anyone ruin my daughter's wedding day. My son-in-law's name is Michael Brown. Get it through your head, and your supervisors will hear about this. Rachel wanted to say something in response, but the driver got to her in time, and having taken her by the hand, dragged her to the exit. Enough. Calm down. You made a mistake. Just accept it and stop torturing yourself, the man said, literally pushing Rachel into the car. The woman couldn't understand anything at that moment, and all she could think about was how she embarrassed herself in front of the entire city. But this man looked so much like Brandon Parker, but his name is Michael, Rachel thought wistfully. There wasn't a lot of work that day, but the woman didn't feel happy about it at all. Three years ago, Rachel broke up with Brandon, and now it turned out that he had changed his name and was acting like he never knew her. It was strange, if not shocking to say the least. 
Having returned home after work, she decided to call Brandon's mother in order to find out how her son was doing. What Rachel learned from Rosemary Parker came as yet another shock. It turned out that Brandon had died in a car accident six months ago. His car got pushed into a ditch by a drunk driver. If Rachel had only known what she was about to find out, she would never have called Mrs. Parker and would have continued living in happy ignorance. The amount of shocking news and events she had experienced that day was too much for Rachel. The poor woman sat in a chair and put her head in her hands. The woman felt like Alice from Alice in Wonderland, as if she fell into some strange world full of mysteries. Eventually, after weighing all the pros and cons, Rachel decided to try talking to Michael Brown one more time. It wasn't hard to find his phone number on social media, so within half an hour, she was already talking to the man. Naturally, she wasn't going to see Michael at his place, so she asked him to meet her in a cafe. Fortunately, Michael turned out to be a nice person, who chose not to remind Rachel of her outburst at his wedding. First of all, the woman told Michael that he looked exactly like Brandon Parker. Well, I don't know what to tell you, I don't have any brothers. I grew up in an orphanage. Perhaps it's just a strange coincidence, although having the same kind of mole is very unlikely to be coincidental. The man drawled thoughtfully. Listen, you're not going to get in trouble for seeing me, are you? Rachel asked cautiously. I don't think so, although my father-in-law is a rather quick-tempered and sharp person. Michael answered, doubting whether he was actually right. It was clear from the man's face that he wanted to get to the truth just as much as Rachel did, but there was no easy way to do it. Having gone through a lot of different theories and conjectures, the young people agreed that they needed to hire a private investigator. Michael took care of all of the expenses associated with this endeavor. He actually turned out to be a very principled and fair person. As he was saying goodbye to Rachel, Michael couldn't have even suspected that an inconspicuous little man in a baseball cap pulled over his eyes was already following his every step. After the incident at the wedding, Charles Somerset hired a man to secretly follow his son-in-law, and he regularly provided him with reports on Michael's activities. It turned out that while Michael was trying to unravel the mystery of his doppelganger, he was actually being watched as well. Two weeks passed, during which Michael and Rachel saw each other almost every day. They met purely for business purposes, so they never did anything that could be viewed as immoral. The investigation into Michael's doppelganger took a long time, and when the detective finally called them up and said that it was done, the joy of Michael and Rachel knew no bounds. As it turned out, Brandon and Michael were twin brothers who got separated in childhood by their mother. 25 years ago, Rosemary Parker gave birth to twins. Being single, she realized that she wouldn't be able to provide a decent life for her two kiddos, so the young mother left one of them at the door of the orphanage. Of course, this was a very hard decision to make, but Rosemary felt that she didn't have a choice at that time. Thus, Brandon stayed to live with his mother while Michael spent his childhood in an orphanage. Rosemary Parker kept this secret for a long 25 years, and the only person she shared it with was the detective, who already had enough evidence on his hands as it was. So that's the thing. I was right, you really do look exactly like Brandon, Rachel said, having recovered from the initial shock. Michael smiled back and imagined meeting his mother for the first time in his life. At that point, the young people felt that their joint project was over and that their lives would finally return to normal. However, Rachel and Michael didn't take one thing into account, the vindictive nature of Charles Somerset. Having learned that his son-in-law was regularly meeting with some woman, the millionaire immediately jumped to the wrong conclusion and demanded that Michael divorced his daughter. Frankly speaking, Michael wasn't exactly opposed to this idea since life with the rich man's spoiled daughter turned out to be simply unbearable. It was only then that Michael realized that marrying Amanda Somerset was a big mistake. Having received the desired freedom, the man couldn't help but turn his attention to Rachel, who became a true friend to him during the time of their investigation. As we all know, more often than not, a friendship between a man and a woman evolves into a very different kind of relationship. Amanda and Michael were no exception. Having been united by a common cause, they started spending more and more time together. 
What's interesting is that if it weren't for the incident at the wedding, Rachel and Michael might have never even have met. However, none of us get to know how fate really works, and therefore we don't get to know what awaits us in the future. We could talk about it for a long time, but we won't by doing that. Instead, let's just wish the young people happiness and end this amazing story on a pleasant note.